The following is a review of the comic. A review only. And doesn't mean that I want to sleep with any of the creators involved. I mean, I'm not trying to get a job at Marvel or DC. If you think that's the case, however, you can kindly do a 180 degree and go check yourself in at the nearest psychiatric facility. Also, the quality of this video is really low. So if you're expecting higher standards, go check out someone else, like your friendly neighborhood psychology nerd. Because here, what you see is what you get. Thank you, and please enjoy this very, very unbiased review. Hey guys, Target here, and well, let's wrap up my little Indiegogo weekend. We already gone over the Meg on Friday. Yesterday we went over Jawbreaker, and we I went back over Jawbreaker's Lost Soul and reviewed God and Bringer and Jawbreaker's God King. Still came his pocket speaking that one. Now this one, much like how is Bigfoot Bill, how this has been one of the best Indiegogo products I've gotten a long time, and I'm considering going over the um, the little preview book, maybe, maybe not. But much like how this was the best one of that set I got before, I hate to say, I gotta say it, so too was this. Kind of ironic, actually. I got this bad boy around the same time I got this and this. So we got Mike and, and, and Rich all together alongside against Doug. And Doug comes out on top again. <laughs> Big surprise as we go over Earthworm Jim Launch the Cow. And I'll go a little bit over the making of book as well. Not too much. But yeah, I've been a big, huge Earthworm Jim fan. Huge. That's part of the reason why I got Big Football because it reminded me so much of Earthworm Jim. And this, well, I'll be honest. First, to the making of for a second, I always remember. First of all, this is a gorgeous book. You can probably tell from the lighting. Yeah, see, in you know those indentations, silver lining pages. <laughs> it's so amazing. But I always remembered this little comic. Hold on. Don't need to adapt, reflect it. This little comic here that gives his origin without any dialogue whatsoever. Something caused Jim to just turn huge. We always thought it was part of the suit. But eventually in this origin, we'd be made clear. But I always remember that. That always stuck with me. So now we're getting a revised version of the origin. Now, gotta make something clear. Doug actually did work quite a bit on the um, cartoon. So a lot of the characterization of the characters in the cartoon are from Doug. And he takes a step further in this. And I'll point out some differences when we get there. Speaking of differences, when we open up Deep Space as we see a comet flying on through. And there's this weird spirit on the comet who's wondering, how long will I be alone? My heart has been broken for ages. It is, it is my portion to ride this rock in search of any company. No friends have seen me and I have seen no friends. I am the space fairy. Space magic, in other words. <laughs> but yeah, we then open up at the space frigate Insectia. Nice design as Psycho shows up on, I mean, with his ship for refueling as he comes off and meets Professor Monkey for a head. She has never called Monkey Professor for a head. I always love that joke. But yeah, we actually get some more characterizations for Psycho. For one, he loves Earth and to eat worms. Even says, um, actually, hold on one second, I'll be right back. So, sorry about that. Uh, and I'm fresh out of worms. I am so fresh. I need you and your and your fresh quick. I and help me with all my experiment, and I will get you more. An experiment? You're not putting me in one of those stupid suits. Last time you fought by my drumsticks. <laughs> oh, Psycho, looky here, looky, uh, uh, I've got worms. Cut. 
resist worms? Like, I guess it can't hurt to look out your experiment. Good bird, right this way. Yeah, I had to double check how the voices sound. And welcome to my parlor, diary, darling Psycho. You don't have to darling me, Queenie. I just came for the worms. Don't call me Queenie. <laughs> Basically, we get the whole notion of the, pow the super suit and everything. As, um, uh, Professor Monkey for a head, explain your new super suit, Siggy. It is essentially a bike pedal and uh, uh, an energy receptacle. You lost me at it. <laughs> Again, so much of it feels like reminds me of the cartoon. Can you use smaller words? It's a walking battery. So and so. And it houses an electrical energy particle. It is the rarest in the universe. How more of it, many more of these energy particles are there? None. This is the only one. That is rare. <laughs> That's basically the end. You know, he tries on the suit. It fits them because it's designed to fit anyone. And basically they need to use it to connect into a Death Star ray and blow a planet. As we're then also introduced to uh, Princess What's-Her-Name. I'm, no, that planet is full of little pastel colored ponies, unicorn, and pegasus to talk and apply glitter to each other. They, uh, and they'll, yep, kaboom, blows up it, blows it all up. As, yeah, he gets up, his psycho gets up, is given his worms as he leaves, basically showing that, yep, it worked. But before they can act on anything, they suit is gone. And turns out, in this change continuity, Rather than being sisters, she's now her mother. Although, yeah, I think that included in the making of book, I can reveal this, is made clear that Princess What's-Her-Name is from Earth. She's a human, abducted by as a baby and raised as, um, to be the queen. Why? Who can say? Especially given how the queen seems to hate Earth later on. But yeah, she does so, and the antennae and wings are all very just well-made disguises or uh, elaborate costumes by Professor Monkey for a head to basically, um, uh, well, to basically put, put on the illusion. And, well, if he's good enough to make a suit, why not? So, yeah, she's taking it, and, uh, and she's taking it. The Queen sings from where Psycho did it. And don't look at me! Then it starts running up, and we see a badass. And basically, Doug said he sees a lot of Marion Ravenwolf from, um, from... Indiana Jones and Princess Leia and her and I definitely see that and I do like how he's made her a much tougher character and not just default to Jim's foil she actually and she has a bee a bee, deadly bee weapon to quote Linkara bees my god <laughs> as she kicks all kinds of ass takes out the ray gun from the gun from the suit and starts blasting making her way inside putting a little tracking beacon on board as well, of course, um, yeah, she uh, and the queen asks, What are you doing? Obviously, takes off. Psycho gives, um, gives chase, promising you can have all the worms that's left. As he gives chase, starts to grapple on them with a hook. They see the comet, and we get introduced to Snot. He's always been around, but he was more made a main point in Earthworm Jim 2. Um, and yeah, they throw it out right onto the comet where, well, um, Psycho tries to give chase, but of course they go in full reverse and pull him away to distract it. And then causing a short circuit, but then he shoots the ship causing it to crash. Uh, well, the damage it anyway. But then, I love it with the space fairy. Finally, a man to keep me company. See, it's nothing to... Uh, hold on a second. I'm back again. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. She realizes then... This suit is no man but a husk. So she gives it life saying, You will make life before we meet again and there will be love. And she lets it go and it crash lands on earth. Right on a farmer's place where a little earthworm climbs inside and thanks to the magic of the fairy, and of the fairy, not because of the suit itself, he turns into Earthworm Jim. God, Ruby! And he's, of course, like, I have hands. I'm alive. Now, I love this bit. You must be mom. And you're my mother. And you must be 
father slams right into him. Um, father and father is male bonding with me. Daddy sees some dirt, starts eating it, sees half a worse for me, so I've already been alive 10 seconds, and I'm already a cannibal abomination. <laughs> I can so see Dan Castaneda doing the voice of this. He eventually walks up and meets the, um, the farmer and asks, what's his name? Welp, my name is Jim. Farmer Jim, what's your name? Jim, Earthworm Jim, and us? A legend was born. As he's walking off and he meets Peter Puppy, who's already talking. I'll call you Peter Puppy. Actually, I, I'm actually the proto pooch. I'm a magic dog. Magic dog. And do magic dogs talk. And the. Uh oh. Crow a crow grabs him. Not his nemesis in this version. But he blasts him with the little crow ghost. Flies up the psycho, gives him the warning, and basically says, like, head on to Earth if you want to take care of him. Psycho is all the more happy to do so. Uh, and basically, yeah, the, um, but we find out that it turns out the Queen has some people already down on Earth. Some, um, some agent, one of which is the Proto Pooch. Uh -oh. And er, Jim keeps on following Jim, carrying. Peter with him and he's just like I'm trying to get away from you no offense and at the same time princess what's her name crash lands on here with snot on her face for a bit as she heads in leaving her crown behind as she makes her way towards the in the bar where basically they were uh, hold on. yeah he's you know, Jim's having a good old time just palling around with them the baby says how, uh, so there I was with this crow, biting me in the face. What'd you do? I pulled out my blast, my blaster and disintegrated him. What other stories have you got? <laughs> and I just love it. It's like, hey, I lo we like your new friend. He won't leave me alone. Can you call the police? But of course, um, and by, uh, yeah, then we have a guy that says, what's her name? Yes. What? That's the first syllable. Yes. Keep going. Uh, I don't understand. My name is what's her name? And uh, that's a silly name. And she's already down to business, just pawing him around and basically, like, I don't know who you are, but that super suit doesn't belong to you. It's the only body I've ever known. That can't be true. It only just landed on this planet three hours ago. That's how long I've been alive. <laughs> and well it starts leading a uh, guy seems like, he bothering you, lady? And the suit just automatically punches him out. And what's her name is basically like, oh, this isn't funny. Your brain is all in danger. You know, things like that. And ah, she's all right. This is getting stupid. But Psycho shows up. Uh oh. Hold on. And now they're just sitting together eating. And yeah, he's, you know. Jim is, he's not stupid, he's just naive. And, but he's happy whenever they're, t you know, he, she's touching him. Um, and, well, um, the farmer's trying to leave. But as he does, Psycho shows up, forces him to sit down as they're all gathered around. But he's saying, I have my, I have my blaster point at all of you. Although, <laughs> Peter makes the obvious point, of, how can you shoot all five of us? Yeah, does it have five barrels? Shut up, or I'll pull the trigger right now. No thanks. No thanks. I've got one of in five chances to, to finish these fries. Have it your way. <laughs> he fires off and destroys a mechanical bowl, of which my favorite part. They're like, like you just killed the writing bowl. He was built in '79, and uh, his dad built that thing in 1978. It was just a mechanical bowl. Uh, not, no, that mechanical ball is also the state dart champion ten years in a row. He got purple hard fighting in the Gulf War. He won, <laughs> took the gold medal parallel bars in the 84 Olympics and won the Nobel Peace and Prize for particle physics just last year. He was on the way of curing cancer, you idiot. My, my aunt has cancer. What the fuck? But of course, because of all that, they get out of there and the bartenders, uh, the bar guys wedgie him. 
as they're running, they come across the ball, and print, uh, because she realizes print, um, Psycho got her um, tracker, they leave the tracking device on the ball as he's heading out. And Jim compliments her. She's never been complimented, obviously, because she's so beautiful, but the queen is so ugly, they think like, oh, like, oh, and no one's called her anything. And Jim just gives her compliments, and she's like, hey, it's working. Which, again, I like. Uh, this is the happiest time in my four-hour life. Jim. <sighs> but then Psycho gets tossed down and starts looking for the tracker. Which, as we know, will eventually lead him upon... Hold on. Oh, we don't know there yet. We have to find out, turns out, Buzz and Farmer Jim created the ever-famous rocket that he rides on. And, yeah, and basically the she... Princess What's Her Name explains about the suit, how it works, how they can even stuck that and stick that rocket in his pocket, which she does so, and basically says like, um, it's a waste in another dimension. Put your head down your neck, and we actually get how the insides work. I never thought of it that way. That's interesting. That explains, and cut the suit can swap on his own. Explains why you know pull his head on, doing that stuff. Explains why you know it sometimes goes on its own. Oh, but then we leave us. Can we kiss now? Can we? What kisses her right on the lips? No time for this. Yep. Then we get a uh, psycho dealing with the ball, knocks him right face first into a thing of, well, manure. What the heck is this substance? Uh oh. And now the farmer brings a bunch of well, fried chicken with mashed potatoes and gravy, as. Uh, now, during all this, we reveal also that he had a wife, redhead, like the princess. Doesn't mention much about a daughter, though, but, yeah, they do a, a little prayer. It's nice. Now, I love this, though. The princess is already guzzling down some of the gravy. He's like, hey, now, wait a second, but it's delicious. Yes, but it's more delicious when you have if it's the mashed potatoes. To which she's all like, I don't understand, get this. I tried the mashed potatoes. I don't see how the combining them together will make anything better. They're just particles and she loves it. But then Jim makes nice steps on Peter's tail and well, he turns into the ever monster, um, but the monster Peter we know and, and a fear. They're basically throwing everything they can at him to try and stop him until the princess decides to tickle him and he reverts back to normal. But she, but Peter's actually feeling upset, but the princess is having none of it. She's basically saying how, um, he's not just a monster. He works for the queen. Uh, uh, man, but that's terrible. I like Peter Puppy better. Uh, and he works for my mother, the queen of Insectia. You're royalty? No way. Oh, stupid me. You're a princess. That's why your name is princess. It all makes sense now. <laughs> the looks on their faces. But yeah, she's basically trying to explain to him how you gotta cut and, and take him out. Otherwise, uh, you know, you gotta blast him. It's the only way to destroy him. But he's like, I don't want to do it. He's my dog. Like, which side are you on? Yeah, she's not getting it either, though. But she's, uh, oh, yeah, then Psycho's starting to sneak his way in. Oh, I should say, Jim's also agreeing to put Peter out of his misery. But yeah, Tracker gets smashed and he and Psycho throws it. Now he realizes he has to get his gun. Meanwhile, Jim grabs Peter and walks off with him. The farmer, farmer Jim's just like, I knew it had, and I knew it. The dog has rabies. Eh, something like that. Um, Psycho's able to get his um, uh, gun and blast the poor ball, leaving him at the pile of hamburgers. I love 2D logic like that. And, well, Jim can't bring himself to do it. As he tells Peter to go, and then he shoots into the air. But then Psycho makes it to his ship and sees the plasma going in the air and takes off. Jim goes back claiming he took care of it, and you could so tell um, that the princess cares. She's like, I knew it was tough, but you did the right thing. Dutch! <laughs> but then... Um, Psycho picks up Peter and brings him on board. Uh-oh. 
And now they're ready to sleep, um, you know, sleep on the couch. Uh, we can sleep on the couch together, princess, me, and you. It'll be just like, just like sleeping on the couch together. I don't think it's appropriate. Right? Now if you sleep on top of me, the super suit so, is so strong, it can hold a lot of weight. I don't have a lot of weight, Bean Brain. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what he meant, princess. I got it. Well, excuse me, princess. <laughs> but yeah, Psycho comes in attack and they realize, uh-oh, you d and he didn't take out Peter. And he's just so upset and she's like, you lied to me. And basically she's like, let's get out of here and Jim and Farmer Jim. Um, he might as well be working for the queen. And as they start heading down the stairs, they're like, wait, are we breaking up? We were never even together. <laughs> as well, yeah, Psycho gathers up a device that brings a bunch of crows and he mutates them into super crows. And they all go in to get the suit. But then Jim calls out the princess on her crap, saying, That's the problem with you. Everything about you is this fight, and you never stop to enjoy what you're fighting for. Although she rightly retorts, Because if we don't fight, nothing will be left to enjoy. That almost makes sense. Uh-oh. As the crows make their way in, smashing their way in. <laughs> uh, God, they want my body. Quit screwing around. This is war. As they just start shooting at everything. It's a big action fest. As Jim then shoots the, um, the up into the upper, you know, the ceiling, taking out a couple of others. As, yeah, eat bees. We then have the suit through the famous whipping maneuver. As they make their way up. Um, also, Farmer Jim used snot pretty effectively. Yeah. Surprisingly effectively. They then, um, Psycho hooks up Jim as he takes off, taking Jim with him as they fly on. She keeps on, um, the princess keeps on, um, shooting, um, shoot, and shooting at some of them. Bog lady, you bug me, I bug you. <laughs> um, but then the, um, Psycho vaporizes the farmer's house as Jim makes his way in and starts beating the crap out of him. Eat boot! Ah. And plasma punch! But then Psycho does something pretty disgusting. He actually pulls him out and bites him right in half. Yeah. And then Peter's, uh, and Jim trying to call to Peter saying, um, Peter, old friend, I've known you a day. Peter, new friend, you've got to help me. You're a good dog. Uh, and down you're a good dog. You're the first person to ever call me a good dog. Jim is my friend! As he just transforms and fights on um, a psycho, just beating him up. As um, Jim takes out his butt, basically, and starts reaching with what half he has. As they make their way down and crash, Peter coming with him. And, well, once he lands, Jim tickles him, reverts him back to normal, and... The princess is so overjoyed and even thanks Peter, who's now we're going to be loyal to him. And she even says, Jim, I set this whole war without my salt and shoulders. That my way was the only way. But now I see the way you do things. We can win this your way. Which is touching. But then Psycho reports his failure to the queen and she decides to contact Heck. As Jim and the others bury Jim's butt. To which Peter's like, he was a good butt. Oh, brother. <laughs> and, and can you just bury it already, Jim? Uh, we'll get to this. But yeah, here lies Jim's butt as they head on out. <laughs> um, all of a sudden, though, um, yeah, the creature from Heck grab Jim down underground. And once he's there, um, where we have... Evil the cat <laughs> with his legal team, which leads to another funny bit of mine where first Jim blasts them away, and then he sees their NDAs. This is an NDA to the EWJ game. Who is this Doug Tanapal? And more importantly, 
What's an EMJ, an EWJ? We get the giant snowman from the game, but unlike in the game, Jim doesn't have to do anything as it melts. It does stand a snowball chance. Then evil starts making him offer, saying things like, um, uh, I can regard your body so you won't be just a head. But I don't need it. I got this. Princess won't love you without your full body. She didn't love me with it. Um, and the times have changed so much since then. That was an hour ago. Uh, yes, but it's one eighth of your life. That makes sense. As he basically makes him a deal on um, some simple chores first. As he starts having him clean out Evil's litter box. And he claims it was going to take so long, but Jim basically goes through it all. But for him, he thinks it took 627 years. Uh, yeah, wait, what? I don't get how he came to that conclusion. But then um, Jim thinks like, oh no, they're all dead. And Evil just plays it up. Oh, but actually, he points out time down here has no meaning. When you go back to up up there, it'll only be like as if seconds have passed. Yeah. So actually, time that much time did pass for Jim. Wow. So, um... Yeah. Basically, he then starts saying, Jim starts saying, God bless America. Uh, uh, Please do not speak that name. God? No, the other one. I can't listen to it. Bless? No, idiot. The country. America turns out evil to Kami. Who knew? Uh, yeah, he decides to, um... Yeah, he just, um, gets Jim out of there and he takes over soon and starts running. As, um, Peter brings, um, print the princess the tracking device, which she whacks into working. Right as they do it, evil climbs up. And, oh boy, more action. Just as Psycho shows up. And Psycho shows up with the queen. Uh-oh. Um, Peter attacks the, um, evil... Who decides to leave because he knows she's going to destroy the planet. Good luck and enjoy. Good luck surviving Armageddon. As um, Psycho grabs the suit, uses it to block the princess's blast. I can't. I just love how Doug draws her. As he um, shoots a uh, missile shot, knocking him aside. We then have Jim meet a bunch of sandworms. Who basically revealed that he was foretold to lead them as he makes their way up. Uh, and, you know, they, yeah, they agree to help him as they, ma- again, make their way up. Hold on. Oh, come on. Yep, he writes. Now, remember, he's just a dinky little thing right now. And he's enjoying the dirty eating as um, Psycho puts on the suit and makes it back to the ship. Um, to, and Princess uses snot to try and help, and she decks him one. <laughs> And we get a pretty good fight here, but unfortunately, she's no match for him. Even with Peter helping, she even decks the um and the uh, farmer Jim as well. Then, hold on. Yeah, he throws Peter, gets on board his ship. Then Jim comes up on the sandworm, launching himself up. We're almost done, people. Don't worry. As Jim crawls on again, he's still just ahead. As the princess um says we need a hero Jim I think she did see him go up there yeah she did as well as getting on Jim finds out psycho has been eating his type his kind oh, hold on. and this devastates Jim royal and he's ticked off too as he hops into the pocket and pocket finding all of his stuff and going to his favorite paper clip what then he meets back up. Welcome, welcome back, Psycho. Oh, look what I've got. So, you simian freak, did I deliver or what? It drives me crazy to admit it, but you've done well. Oh, ha, ha, I remember these old slam suits. They could never pull off enough power to properly empower the world gun. So, yeah, that's why the suit, because of that unique power sword, can empower that weapon. So yeah, gets on board and is ready to destroy the Earth. As she and uh, Jim realizes what he has to do. Because Psycho has to concentrate to do this. So Jim does the one thing he can do. 
get Jim's attention and get and get and get Psycho's attention and say, Don't you wanna eat me? Which gets Psycho distracted and he points the blaster right at Jim. Vaporizing. Wait. Vaporizing him. Wait. What? But he says I got to be the hero as the ship blows up. I Everything's starting to go to hell as um, the uh, the um, Professor Monkey for Head makes his way over and detaches the front of the ship. Psycho's completely in flames, saying, You ripped me off, Queenie. The uh, Queen is saying, Even your demise, Arsworm Jim, I hate you. Queenie! That's the last we see of Psycho as the ship's blowing up. They take out, and Princess takes out the tracker, whacks it one more time, and asks, um, scan for Anno life form. Anno life form is terminated. And they are all devastated. They're all crying as Farmer Jim offers to have, stay at his place. As they head off, one of the cows, probably Jim's mother, <laughs> is eating some hay on top of a wagon. Um, as they're doing it, we see that... Um, the queen, though, still feel like um, that Jim is dead. Nothing to stop him, but they still have to stop the daughter, her daughter. So contacts Bob and number four, Bob the goldfish. Meanwhile, the suit comes down, hits the side of the wagon, and well, launches the cow. The sh uh, the um, suit lands right by where Jim's butt is, and starts to work its magic. Given how worms, when cut in half, at least in fiction anyway, can split into two worms. Yeah, Jim will be back. And that Earthworm Jim launched the cow in. Wow. I love this. As an Earthworm Jim fan, this is more than I can ask for. The characterizations are so good. A lot of it's based off of the cartoon, but others, like the princess, feel it's just so much more fulfilling. She's definitely a better character in this. Jim is just so lovable of an idiot. Uh, but it makes sense. Peter is interesting. Farmer Jim is a nice new addition. Psycho is just as crazy as always. Evil the cat. Sure, what is what we have him? He's still evil. The queen is nice. Some of the changes were good. There's just so much to love about this. This is now the new standard. Whereas this was the standard for a while this is the new standard for a good indiegogo i mean look how much i went through for all this seriously guys this is so amazing doug you get and guaranteed my dollars for the next bigfoot bill and the next earthworm gem i promise you that one and because i didn't get the making of book i'll probably be getting the when you do the next campaign getting re-getting this one and Maybe I'll sell this or give this away to someone else. Who knows? But, yeah. That ends my Indiegogo weekend. I'll be coming and tuning in over the rest of the week. Doing over the Tales from the Dark Multiverse store, um, one shot. Until then, just... Wow. This... This is incredible. I mean it. And like I said... The behind making of book is just as good. I mean, just look at his little fact toys. Like, fun fact: Andrea Martin provided the Queen's voice in the anime series. Or Peter Pup and Peter Puppy is a Beagle Jack Russell mix. Or um, Princess What's Her Name is the most rare and valuable of collectible toys because boys don't keep a princess action figure. Psycho was the first villain Doug created specifically to go against Earthworm Jim. I can believe that. Yeah, we'll find out more in book two and everything. I mean, again, he has this stuff sought out. Of course, also a little known fact that all, yeah, got Ruby from the game. That was Doug. <laughs> yeah. I love that little detail, actually, when I found that out. But, yeah. It's not interesting character, Professor Monkey for a head. Again, just so much of the details in the interviews with everyone that worked on the game. Yeah. This 
which is so awesome. So, yep, that's all, guys. See you over the weekend, or over the week. But until then, I'll catch you all later.